collapsed lung. Like, what do I do with that information? Okay, so I'm now home, and I've been crying since the last clip. I got in the car, started crying, and then got home, started crying. I have other personal things going on in my life right now besides this. Oh boy. Hello everyone. My name is Kidney J. The J stands for jerk because my kidneys are a pair of jerks and no one asked for this, but is it, it is an Amberlynn Reed video. She talks about collapsed lung. Of course, I have had a collapsed lung, which happens during surgery. I will explain why and how that happens when we get more into this video. So it probably will be a long one because your girl, it was an Amber Rambler. So I tried to cut out as much as possible, but of course I wanted to keep all the important bits in. This one was called Something Bad Happened, I'm Scared, bracket, not clickbait. And oh boy, let's just hope this is not Becky's fault. And I know like people have been saying I seem so unhappy and stuff. It's just, I'm just, there's a lot of things that I'm not sharing and I don't know if I want to, and I know speculation, speculation, I can't even talk, speculation, but regarding this Not medical speculation, thing, like, so I do keep a lot of things from you guys, and I know I said I'm not going to talk about my fucking ankle anymore, and that was my goal, and, but it was a big part of my life, and I kept just, like, saying blah, 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 ankle, like, I, I never went into detail after I said I'm not going to talk about it anymore. But you went into detail before a lot. And not to trivialize someone else's health problems, you know, health concerns. It's all, we all fight our own battles. It's all subjective. But she did go on quite a bit about her, her ankle. Um, I'm sorry. I look like my makeup looked pretty decent today. And the <laughs> crying has made it not so decent. And the reason why it's bugging me is because I can see myself in the viewfinder and that's, yeah, so I'm sorry about talking about my appearance. People hate when I do that. Okay, so there are a lot of things that I don't talk about with you guys um, out of fear, out of per uh, personal, like stuff like that. And during my whole ankle debacle, um, <laughs> all of a sudden, literally out of nowhere, I was having tremendous shoulder pain to the point of I couldn't move my arm um it was very scary um it radiated to my neck and I was feeling it in my back especially when I would breathe in this was a couple weeks ago um I have had a EKG and no heart attack no heart problems no just want to interrupt uh her there let me know in the comments down below if you've ever had surgery, abdominal surgery especially, and you've had that pain right sort of at your collarbone, between your collarbone and your neck, that's actually air trapped and it is hella painful. Just let me know <laughs> if you've experienced that. I've experienced it, of course, numerous times. While you're there, leave a like and subscribe if you're new. None of that, so we don't have to worry about that. I just wanted to make that very clear um, before I kept going, because I know... Okay, EKG clear, no heart attack. Oh, that sounds very like, okay, heart attack symptoms, um, but it has nothing to do with that. So I was struggling with that for a little bit, and I thought it was because of how I was getting onto the bed because of my ankle, because you don't even realize how much you use certain parts of your body to do certain things until you no longer can use said part of your body or it hurts really bad to use said part of the body oh i was like okay so it was just like a pulled muscle strain muscle situation okay so i got that out long story short is she was getting on the bed sort of a different way than she's used to maybe using parts of her body she doesn't normally use and she thought maybe she pulled a muscle type deal but then it came back a couple days ago and i haven't had to get on the bed in any weird way because my ankle is healing. It is almost healed. A few days ago, I started having the pain again. It started just a little bit in my shoulder, but nowhere near, nowhere near as bad as it was. 
And then, like, when I breathe in, my, like, where your lung is, bro, like, in your back, it is this sharp pain. And not only do I feel that, but it feels like my lung is, like, thumping. First of all, don't call me bro. I'm a classy lady. But let me explain explain a collapsed lung. So, she, spoiler alert, has a partially collapsed lung. Um, which is atelectasis. Um, I had a fully collapsed lung, which is a pneumothorax. And what happens when your lung is collapsed is when you take that deep breath in, you fill all those air sacs with air. Now, when you're unable to do that, because in my case, I had surgery, and when you have um, anesthetic, it actually suppresses your breathing so you don't take, get those deep breaths anymore. So if you're unable to fill those air sacs with air, what happens is between the lung and the chest wall, there's space. And what fills with that space is air. So your lungs are no longer able to fill up with that breath again. Now, risk factors, surprise, surprise, surgery, like I said, smokers, and morbidly obesity. Because you're not maybe able to get that full breath in to fill those sacs with air. So actually uh, between, you know, the, the lung and the chest wall, air fills up and you, you're not able to get that full, that full breath in. So I just want to explain that that's how it was, of course, explained to me. But let's go on with Amber Lynn. Once I reach, especially once I reach that like, like right there, oh, because I did like a deep breath, whatever. So obviously those things are not normal, especially now I have like a little tiny bit of a cough. It's not like 24-7, you know, no mucus is coming out. It's very like dry and there is a little bit of a cough and it's mainly when I get up walk or something um and I have shortness of breath so those things are scary for anybody so I went to the ER EKG normal blood work normal x-ray normal so the only reason why I went to the ER is because I called my doctor's office I love my doctor absolutely amazing phenomenal um best doctor I've ever had honestly so um, I wanted to see my doctor, obviously, instead of going to the ER, but there was no appointments. And they literally said, those are your symptoms. Go to the ER. So I listened. I know a lot of people were mad that I went to the ER, which is so freaking odd to me because if you have shortness of breath with shoulder pain, back pain, all of those things, that's not a, like, those are not like normal things, especially when you're my size, you know, as soon as I got to the ER, they did the EKG with... Okay. Obviously, yes, if you're in distress, if you're told to the, go to the ER, go to the ER. People are not mad that she went to the ER when she was in distress. The reason people get so upset is people like Amber Lynn or others using the ER as your own personal doctor not keeping on top of your health issues, not being preventative, things like that. So you actually use the ER more than you should need to. I have a chronic illness. I have my dialysis treatment three times a week. There are so many things I can end up in the ER for. High potassium with like heart arrhythmia, uh, fluid overload with, um, pulmonary edema are not being able to breathe if I didn't keep on top of these things I'd be in the ER every freaking week you have to keep on top of these things so you don't end up in the ER that's why people get pissed in two minutes of me being there they said that when you come in with symptoms like that they need to take it seriously and urgently because it's so scary so I do not feel bad for going to the ER um, I don't want to feel invalidated in that. Like, I was terrified. So after the ER, you know, it says follow up with your, you know, healthcare provider, your doctor. So I instantly called and made an appointment for Tuesday. And today's Monday. I woke up. And when I tell you, like, 
my breathing was not normal. Like, it just it felt wrong. You know, when I breathe in, like that sharp pain with the weird thumping that's just for the lack of a better word I guess because I don't really know how to explain it to the best of my ability so I was like you know what <laughs> I need to call the doctor see if she can fit me in for today if she can't that's fine we can continue with tomorrow because I know how busy doctors are if she can't oh wait the doctor's calling me hold on okay so the doctor did fit me in for today she said she's gonna look at my d-dimer which when I went to the ER that's what they should have checked especially because the symptoms that um, I had so she was like I'm gonna look and see um, If they did your d-dimer if it's normal then obviously it's not a blood clot but Then if it's a little elevated then it's something we need to look into um They probably at the ER because she does go to say go on to say that they didn't ask um, They didn't take the d-dimer um, I'm Probably sure that they asked a series of questions as well to go with the D-dimer? Like, did you have any leg pain? Do you have a history of blood clots? Just saying. Um, so she said, I'll call you, but she just called me. And because she wanted to look at all my results. She wanted to look at my blood, my x-rays, my EKG. So just keep in mind that when I went to the ER, they said, oh, that's normal. And in my heart, I just, I felt like they were wrong. This has happened before. I know that I need to be an advocate for myself. And I just feel nine times out of 10, just as a morbidly obese person, we don't get the same healthcare, even doctor now, um, on, from 600 pound life. He's like, so honest about it. He's like, people who are bigger get discriminated against. So they don't, you know, my doctor just called me after she looked. Okay. I'm not going to get into deep about the discrimination. Um, I've seen it, uh, as a dialysis patient. And it's not right, of course, but I'll just say this. If a doctor sees you frequently in an ER, not taking your health seriously, then why should they? That's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying it's right. I'll just leave it at that at my stuff and she said they did not do a d-dimer and something actually was found in my x-ray and for some reason at the hospital they didn't tell me part of my lung god i just feel like it's never ending i don't know part of my lung is collapsed the bottom of it and it's like is that what's causing all this? And my doctor said, if your breathing gets worse, then that could be a bad thing. And she said, if it doesn't, then we might be okay. But it's like, why wouldn't the ER tell me? I don't understand that. But okay, so a couple things there. Why wouldn't the ER tell her? I am wondering if this is the case of the enlarged heart. And if you watch Booty Beauty, you know what I mean is that she actually read it on the report that she has an enlarged heart and the doctor didn't mention it to her. Because her doctor maybe assumed she already knew this. Maybe, I don't know. Um, another thing as far as treatment goes, now I actually had to have a surgical procedure uh, to get that lung all plumped up again, um, which was terrible by the way, I had weeks of um, respiratory therapy. I sounded like I was sucking helium for weeks. Um, I had to do those breathing exercises with the balls. Um, hers, they might just watch it and see if it um, resolves itself on its own, which I think they might do. Like partially collapsed lung, like a collapsed lung, is kind of a scary thing. You just said the bottom of it is collapsed. That's terrifying. And I just don't know what to do with that information. Um, she's referring me to the CT place so I can get a CT scan. So I actually have to call today and make an appointment myself. I'm just really, like this is so much on top of what I'm already fucking going through already gone like i was on tiktok scrolling through like a week ago and it said if you find this 
It's meant for you. You're gonna be coming in with lots of good luck. Collapse the lung. Like, what do I do with that information? Like, what do I do? I'm genuinely, like, scared, so. Okay. Of course, she's scared. <laughs> what does she do with this information? Well, it seems obvious to me, and it probably seems obvious to you, is you arm yourself with knowledge, you lose weight, you hope, you don't hope, you make sure something like this doesn't happen again, or you, um, you give yourself like all the opportunities for this to not happen again, which starts with her weight. Um, like, I don't understand. There's things in your life where you sort of get a tap on your shoulder, a little warning sign. You're like, oh, okay, whatever. And then maybe you get a slap on the back and you think, oh, okay, wait. I should pay attention. And then maybe you get knocked across the freaking head with some information and you think, holy shit, I better wake up. Why wasn't the big knock across Amberlynn's head when she was diagnosed with uterine cancer? I don't understand. Oh, um, yeah, I'm going through it. Anyways, that's it for me. I know it was a long one and Amberlynn Reed I haven't done it in a long time, but I appreciate you guys all listening. Like I said, leave a comment, leave a like, and subscribe if you're new. And let me know if you want me to check in with uh, Amber again and follow this journey. I'll talk to you later. Bye!